What's up, Pass for Tribe? It's your personal trainer, Coach Kozak. I'm Claudia, and this is a full body strength training workout you can do at home. We'll work together to build lean muscle and strength. This is a no repeat workout, so we'll only be performing one set of each exercise. Today's session does require dumbbells, and we recommend having several weights available to you so you can switch up the weight as needed. You may also use a chair, bench, or box, but it's not required. Now let's begin. All right, let's begin with a warm up. We're gonna prepare our bodies for this work that's coming up, get a little mobility work in, and raise our overall body temperatures. Our first move is going to be a toe touch to a scarecrow. Starting with our feet together, we are going to hinge at our hips, reach down as far as you can. Maybe that's touching the floor, maybe it's your toes, your ankles, your shins, your knees, just reaching as far down as you can. And then we're gonna stand up, bring those hips forward, arms stay straight up overhead, and then pull down from the elbows while pulling back on your hands and elbows. Good. Oh, that Diving feels back so down. So nice on the back. Yeah, it's a great overall posterior chain move. And back up. So again, all the way up, full extension, and then it's almost like somebody's pulling those hands and elbows back, and that chest comes forward. Dive back down. This is a dynamic warm-up move, so we're not holding any one position as in a static stretch, but moving throughout this dynamic stretch. One last one, hitting our calves, hamstrings, glutes, mm -hmm. lower back, upper back, shoulders, chest, and pulling back, opening up. Very good. Ooh, great stretch. We are gonna move to the floor for the next one. It's called a bird dog. We're gonna get into a quadruped position on our hands and knees. I'm gonna bring my right hand to my left knee and then extend both my right arm and my left leg. Return back down, alternating now. Left hand to my right knee. Extend that left arm and right leg. So slow and controlled. Again, this is the warm up. Plenty of time for pushing the pace here once the actual workout begins. So almost like we're gonna kick our heel through the wall behind us. Yeah, it's a great point. A lot of times I see people do this one and they're kicking up, but that's not what we wanna do here. We wanna kick straight back, getting like a nice straight line from our hand all the way to our heel. That's right. Pretend like you're trying to balance a glass on your back. So a nice tabletop, no rotation. No rotation, well said. Nice controlled breathing here for five. Four, three, two, one, and zero. All right, we're gonna come on up into a half kneeling position. So we're gonna get one knee up. We're gonna place our hands out in front of us. We are going to come forward into a hip opener stretch. So allow, allow that knee to travel over the toe, stretching that hip flexor and quadricep. Then come back, and as we do, I want you to open up and rotate to the side Ooh. of that lead knee. So dive down in. Keep the heel to the ground. And then back, full rotation, opening up that chest, that mid-back. Again, controlled here. And yes, we are stretching those knees and ankle mobility here as we're coming forward into that lead leg. It's on purpose. Last one. Open up that chest. Oh, nice. All right, so same move, opposite side now. I'm gonna place my right leg up, arms are in front. All right, and begin. Coming down, keeping that heel down on that lead leg, coming back, and then opening up on the side of that lead knee. Oh, so good for ankle mobility too. Yeah, a lot of times people who struggle with squat depth, 
you know, they look at their hips, they look at their knees, which are possibilities, but mm -hmm. so many times it's actually ankle mobility that's preventing them from getting down. Also, if you have poor ankle mobility, it can increase your risk of injury or spraining an ankle, which is no fun. No fun. Nice big open here. One last one. And then opening up everything from that biceps, chest, shoulder. Close that book. Woo. And warm up is complete. I'm feeling warm, ready to go, Claudia. I'm ready to get my lift on. Let's do this. Oh, getting her lift on. I like that hazard <laughs> truck. We hope you're ready to get your lift on too. <laughs> Our first one is going to be a uh, dumbbell goblet squat. We need one dumbbell for this one with a heavier weight. We're gonna hold that one dumbbell up in a rack position. I have the power block, so my grip is a little bit different. Probably for most of you, your grip is gonna be more similar to what Claudia's grip looks like. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna align my toes and my right foot with my left heel, and then I'm on the balls of the foot with that right foot. And the point of that is I really wanna uh, make my lead leg do about 85% of the work, but that back leg is more for balance. Now I'm gonna right. break at the hips, keep my head and chest up, sit back, and come on up. We're gonna do eight on each side. We're doing them together, getting started with some legs. Ready, and begin. Like you're gonna sit back into a chair, keeping your head up, chest up. Inhale down, exhale as you come back up into the starting position. And that's three. And today's workout is a strength training session. So we are gonna focus on that time under tension. Not a race, not a quick hit workout. Really want to feel every one of these reps. We're controlling that lowering phase. Again, breaking at your hips, then the knees. Inhaling down. Last one right here. Exhaling up. Okay, switch your feet. So now my left toes are going to be in line with my right heel. Again, nice wide base and begin. Break at those hips, then sit down. Wide base so that you don't lose your balance. Yeah, it just helps you with your stability. Woo! My lead leg from the previous set is actually on fire right now. <laughs> All right, it's working already. It's a good sign when it's working on that first Woo. set. This one's working, your hamstrings, quadriceps, glutes, even your shoulders and arms a little bit, just holding that dumbbell in that rack position. That's six, two more. Also keeping our core braced and tight. Don't wanna lose core. No, last, last one. one. And there's eight. Nice work. All right, next up, we are going to move into an exercise for our upper back. We're gonna do a staggered one-arm dumbbell row. We need one dumbbell. I'm actually gonna use the same weight as what I was using for my lower body on that. Actually, you can I'm decide gonna do if that's right for you. I think I'm gonna do what you're doing. Keep the same weight. We're gonna get into a staggered stance. My right leg is gonna be back. My left hand's on my hip. I'm gonna keep my core tight while I bend over at a 45 degree angle. Shoulder stays square. Now I'm gonna pull back from that elbow. And I'm gonna row 15 times on each side. Ready, and begin. Nice straight line from your head down to your, down to your posterior. And that elbow leads the way. So I'm not pulling back with my hand, but if you've been around for a while, you've heard me use this analogy. It's like there's a string attached to that elbow and that elbow is coming back first, pulling back on that string, slowing the pace down. Want to control the way down as well as the way up. That's 10, five more. Remember, it's just one set. So choosing a weight that's appropriate for you. Here's four, one more to go. And exhale. There's 15. All right, now we got to do, even it out. Have to do the opposite side That's now. Right. right side is resting, left side is going to work. And begin. Again, pulling back from that elbow. Elbow leads the way. Back is straight. Throughout today's workout, it's going to be up to you to choose that appropriate weight. No two bodies are the same. You want to feel a weight that challenges you, but allows you to perform all the repetitions with good form. Here's 10, five more. And at a controlled pace. Temptation on these is just to allow the dumbbell to fly back down. We don't want that. This is a strength training session. Control it. Last one. And there's 15. Ooh, nice work. We actually don't need our dumbbells for the next one. We're going to work on our core while our 
upper body takes a bit of a rest. Moving to the floor, we're gonna get into a side plank position. We're gonna do two different variations to work with here. We're gonna do a side plank leg raise. I'm gonna be up. And, and I'm gonna climb. be, I'm gonna have my left knee down. So keeping that elbow underneath my shoulder, nice straight line here, mm -hmm. opposite hands on my hips. Now here's the leg raise, straight leg up. Both glutes working on this one. All right, we're gonna do this one together for 12 repetitions on each side. Ready and begin. Again, breathing on this. Anytime you get up into this plank position, the temptation is to hold your breath, fight that temptation. Here's number nine, three more. Let that heel lead the way. And last one. Ah, nice work, switch okay. sides. Switch sides, and you're gonna feel that glute working on both, on both legs. No Just, doubt. All right, here we are, back up into ready position, and begin. Shoulders right above the elbow. This one's working your shoulder, your obliques, that side ab muscle, and both glutes. Tough overall move here. Doesn't look like much, but it'll get you fast. Three more. Keep -wee. breathing. One more. Nice work. Ah, excellent. All right, we are gonna need our dumbbells for the next one on our feet. You might wanna go a little lighter on this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. We need two dumbbells. We're gonna do a reverse lunge plus shoulder press. So it's a combination move. Yep. Uh, like I said, we're gonna go a little lighter on this one. And it's a shoulder press, so the muscle group is, a, is smaller, right? So really good to just pick an appropriate weight. Yeah, compared weight. to your legs, which, right. you know, a, may, a compound leg exercise, which is multiple movers. Okay, we're gonna start with these dumbbells up in a rack position, up by our chin. Palms are gonna stay facing in the whole time. I'm gonna step back into a reverse lunge. Both knees drop to a 90, and as I come up, both arms press overhead. Again, dropping back, both knees 90, up, press. We're gonna do this eight times on each side. Correct. So you get 16 shoulder presses and you get eight lunges on each side. Ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> and begin. Again, remember it's always easier to start light and work your way up than it is if you start too heavy to come down after burning yourself out. Whew. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. You have three more. Trying your best to come up right before that knee bounces off the floor. You decide which depth is most appropriate for you. Last one on this side. Okay, same move, opposite side Shake now. Shake those shoulders out. Shake those shoulders out, we got eight more. Ready, and begin. Good balance. Drive them up overhead. Keeping your core engaged throughout the whole movement. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. Halfway point. It's working your hamstrings, quadriceps, glutes, core, shoulders, triceps. Excellent compound move. Two more. Almost there, fighting to the end. Whew, here we go, last one. You got it, Tribe. Ah, excellent. Next up, we're gonna move into a bent over reverse fly. And we recommend a lighter weight for this one. We need two dumbbells for this move. Again, if you haven't done this move before, err on the side of caution and choose oh, yeah. a little lighter. Always easier to move up. Mm -hmm. Feet are hip width apart. We're gonna bend over on a 45 degree angle, keeping our back straight. Now I'm gonna bend at my elbows, almost like I'm wrapping my arms around a tree. I'm gonna keep that same flexion in my elbows throughout. Now I'm gonna pull back, notice how my elbow bend doesn't change, and squeeze the middle of my back, then control the way back down. Doing this one for 15 repetitions. Ready. I'm ready. And begin. Again, the temptation is to allow those dumbbells to just fly down without any resistance but we want to control both ends of the move, the concentric, that's the pushing phase or pulling phase, and then the eccentric, which is that yielding negative phase. It's so important. 
We don't want to get half the results by only doing half the rep. No way. Squeeze the middle of that back every time. Four more. Work on our rear delts, middle of our back, our rhomboids, our rotator cuff muscles. Last one right here. And there's 15. Nice okay, work. We're going to give our back a little bit of a break and we're going to move into Claudia's favorite exercise. Push-ups. Yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I'm using a bench for this one. And I'm going to come down to the floor. Why are you using that bench, Claudia? Because the higher the implement that you use, the easier the push-ups are going to be. So you choose, we have 15 repetitions. That's right. If you feel comfortable on the floor, or maybe you even really feel good and you want to elevate your feet up to make it harder, or you're on a, uh, a bench, a couch, a countertop. High countertop, or even the wall. So, so my hands are going to be um, just outside, just a little wider than my chest. I'm going to breathe in on the way down, control it, and exhale on the way up. 15 repetitions. You can do it. Ready. Begin. Keep that core tight and engaged. I don't want your butt sinking down, and I don't want your butt up in the air. Inhale. On the way down, exhale as you come up. We really want to focus on good form here. So making sure your elbows are flaring at about a 45 degree angle relative to your body. So that's why we say, if raising the implement that you're using is going to help you maintain a better form, please do that. This is working our chest, our triceps, our shoulders, and even our abs and our core to maintain this position. You have five more. All right, come on. Right to the end, folks. Only the one set of these today. Make it count. You got it. So close. Staying strong here. Last one right here. Pushing through. Dig deep. Ha, there's 15. Nice work. Okay, so... Shake out those shoulders and chest Shake muscles it out. because we're going to keep getting used with this next one. Uh, we're going to do a high plank bird dog. I'm going to stay down on the floor. Notice I still have my bench. So from this similar position, they're not, those muscles aren't going to get much of a break. Now we're really going to engage our core. I recommend a little wider stance with your feet for balance. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to bring up my right straight arm and left straight leg, and I'm going to hold for one, two, three four, five, back down. Same thing with the left side. This is a challenging movement. Oh yeah. You see, I'm not perfect at this either. We're just working on trying to keep your body uh, for, to stop rotating side to side. Yes. Okay, five seconds, alternating right and left sides. Ready, and begin. So great for one, your core. Two, three, four, five, down. Now left arm, right leg. Begin. One, two, three, four, five. Down. Alternating between the two again. Focus and breathe. Squeeze that core down and up, as well as your glutes to stay up. Emphasizing those glutes. Woo wee! And Come down. On. Maybe focus your eyes on something. Next. One, two, three, four, five. Good, again, opposite side. One, two, three, four, five. One more on each, here we go. Begin, one, two, three, four, five. Last one, and go. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, that one burning out the shoulders, core <laughs> is hitting everything. Nice work. Next up, we're going to move into a deep isometric lunge. We need two dumbbells for this one. And I'm personally, I'm strong on my lunge, so I'm going to go heavier. But if you have a history of knee problems or, or knee issues, you may want to go lighter or no weight at all. That's right. Body weight is totally fine with that as well. So we're going to get into a deep isometric lunge position. I'm actually nice and wide with my legs, and I'm allowing that lead knee to come up over my toes. That's by design. We're getting low, and we're just going to hold right there. We're doing that for 30 <laughs> seconds on each side. You got an idea of the position. Choose your weight accordingly. Also going to work your grip just by holding on to those dumbbells. Mm -hmm. Ready? And begin. I want you to keep that foot, that lead foot flat on the floor. Don't come up onto your toes. 
And I know a lot of you have been told in the past, oh, well, on your lunge, you never want your knee to go over your toes. Eh, there are time and a, there is a time and a place for that. Again, this is just isometric hold position, strengthening not only our quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes, but also helping to stabilize that knee while helping to improve mobility in our ankles. Three, two, one, up. Okay, so we're gonna shake them loose for just a moment. And then yes, we're going right back into it <laughs> on the opposite side. Couple of big deep breaths here. Smile through it. Smile through it, I like That's it. That's it. And begin. Again, nice and deep. It's working different muscles on each leg. So this is still considered a unilateral exercise. Most of the weight's gonna be on that lead leg. You might feel some shaking going on, and that's all right. That's how we know it's working. If you need to take a short break, do it, but Ooh, the goal is- come up a little bit. Yep, the goal is we're trying to get to that full 30 seconds, pushing yourself here. Five seconds. Three, two, one, zero. Oh my word. Ah, okay, so the good news is there's no more of those. I saw a YouTube comment the other day that was like, my favorite thing that they say, no more of those. So <laughs> no more of those. We are gonna move on to a move for our upper body next. We need two dumbbells for a curl plus an Arnold press. Probably lighter than what you were using on that last one. It's combination move, working both our shoulders and our biceps. We're gonna do 15 repetitions. Feet are shoulder width apart. We're starting with those palms facing forward. We're gonna curl. That's part one. Press overhead, twisting those palms forward. Part two, reverse it. Part three, four, down. Doing that one for 15 in total while our legs figure out what's going on. Figuring out what your life is. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to remember my name. All right, here we go. And begin, curl up, twist those palms, reverse it, down. We wanna make sure that our pelvis is stacked directly underneath our rib cage. Just so important for proper breathing throughout any exercise that you're doing. Whew. Controlling the way up and the way down, that's five. I know each one of these but that four parts really takes its toll. Oh yeah. And control, control, control. So much easier just to allow those dumbbells to flop back down. Four more. We're not in it for easy. We're in it to be challenged and in it to get change. Especially that negative curl. Ooh, goodness. Right there, feeling it. Come on. Last Next. one. Yep. All right. Nice work. Ah, we made it. We made it. You made it, Claudia. I did, and you made it out there too. We really so delivered on that full body promise. I'm pretty sure we hit every muscle from head to toe today. One of the best ways to relieve that soreness over the next couple of days is by stretching afterwards. So that's what we're gonna do here in our cool down. Let's move to the floor. Do we're it. gonna do a side lying quad stretch. So we're gonna lie down on our left side here to start. Okay. Left leg is straight, left arm is out straight. I'm gonna reach back and either grab that foot or your ankle, whatever you can reach. If you can't reach anything, use a towel or a band to help you with this one. Keep that knee tucked into your side here. So we don't want it up, want it down. We're just gonna hold, stretching out that quadriceps, that big thigh muscle over the knee. Oh, For three. Just take a big deep breath. Take a big deep breath. Two, one. I can't even talk. Relax. <laughs> All right, so staying in this position, I'm now going to bend my right knee and bring it up and over at a 90 degree angle. And now I'm gonna bring both hands together. It's called a page turner. So picture yourself as a big book. And now we need to open that book. We're going to open and rotate, keeping our eyes on that hand, keeping our knee down. As best as we can. And then close the book. Nice and controlled here. Yes, this one is a dynamic move. So what if someone isn't able to rotate all the way back and touch their hand to the floor behind them? Yeah, great them? question. You do the best you can. If, you don't, if this is what you got, well, that's all right. Do what you can, and every time you come back, hopefully, 
by design, that mobility is improving and you can get a little bit further. And you'll probably even notice within this one set oh, yeah. that you'll start to loosen up a little bit. The first one or two are always the, the rustiest, right? Agreed. Those super creaky things pop and crackle. Last one. And close that book. Nice All right. Job. So now we're going to flip, flip over back. the other side and repeat both of those movements. So we are going back to that side line quad stretch. Now, just with our opposite side. And again, reaching back, either pulling your foot, ankle, keeping that knee tight to your side. Ooh, and you might notice this side's usually a little tighter for me. And that's because I had an ACL reconstruction on this side. Oh. I don't know, 18 years ago or so. So I'm never quite as flexible on this side. So, you know, every my reason why I'm telling you that is everybody's different. Doing the best you can with these. Three, two, one, relax. All right, now back into that page turner. Bend, bending that uh, lead knee at 90, both hands stacked on top. And let's open that book. Okay, that first one might feel a little tight. This one is going to stretch our chest, shoulders, back, <gasps> little glutes and hips. It's just a great compound move. We like these efficient moves. And this so, is one we actually do on our own, even when we're not filming. Feeling a little stiff. Sometimes I'll see Coach Kozak on the ground just yeah. doing some page turners. Yeah, if, I've been, <laughs> if I've spent a lot of time at my desk in a day, this is one of my go-to moves just so I can get things right. So we practice what we preach around here. That's right. For three, two, one, and zero. Oh, close so nice. in that book. So nice. All right. So our posterior chain, you heard me say that phrase uh, about 20 times in today's workout. What is it? Workout. It's our, our whole backside, right? It's all connected from our, our really our neck, traps, mid-back, lower back, glutes, hamstrings, calves all the way down. We got a lot of work in today. So let's show them some yeah. love with a little combination. We're going to do a downward dog. I'm going to start on my feet, walking my hands out. And now I am going to pull back from my hips. Keep stretching in those heels to the floor, relaxing your shoulders. And there are definitely a lot of yoga practitioners out there who would make my mobility look poor on this one and so don't feel bad if you're not able to quite get as um, good of a stretch as we are in this one do your best or if you're a lot more flexible than us hey awesome uh, like I said just working through it and sometimes I like to do a little march here alternate with my legs and my feet just breathe and hold big deep breaths all right now let's come down under our knees we're going to transition into a child's pose. My hands are going to stay out in front of me. I'm sitting back. Ideally, I'm trying to sit back onto my heels. So again, depending on your mobility level, that may or may not be possible. That's what we're aiming for. And then we can even walk those fingers out a little bit and relax the shoulders. A couple big, deep breaths here. Such a great workout today. We're just taking a moment to give ourselves a pat on the back. Some encouragement for making it through all the way to the very end today working out we're easy everybody be fit but we all know that's not the case so nice work for showing up today putting in that work for three two one and zero nice ah, work a couple big deep breaths Ooh. as we come up slowly here you don't have to get up but we do Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, one of the best ways to stay on track and to make sure you keep showing up, we've found over the years, we've been doing this for like, oh man, crazy, like 13 years now with the HasFit um, uh, full length workouts, is by following a complete program. You know, it just gives you something to, you know, to know that what I need to do going into the day. I don't have to think about it. You just I come check in it off. and you check it off and you That's make right. sure that all the muscle groups are being accounted for and you make sure that the workouts that you're doing are helping you accomplish those goals so we have uh, almost endless programs for you where can they find those you can find those programs on the hasfit app which can be downloaded to an android or to an apple device so let us help you take the guesswork 
out of your exercise program. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. I'm, I might be using that again. <laughs> you can also stop by our store, pick up some HasFit gear, like a HasFit t-shirt, or our diet guide, Eating for Life. And don't forget to like us on your favorite social media channel. Until next time, I'm Coach Kozak. I'm Claudia. And we will see you at your next workout.